This is your digital marketing toolkit. Hi and welcome back to your digital marketing toolkit, the show that brings the experts to you with practical tips and tools to help you grow your business online. Now I'm Ben Amos from Engage Video Marketing and we're back in our vlog pod studio today with Lisa Harrison from Social Media Mastery. And Lisa's been sharing with us over the course of the last three episodes all about the power of building a personal brand online. And today we're gonna to bring that all home for you business owners out there and talk about why building that personal brand can actually equal more sales for your business. And we're gonna break that down for you. So thanks for coming back again, Lisa. Thanks, Ben. And today I think what we really need to do in this episode is really sum up for people. Now that we've got a strong personal brand and we're building an audience and we're you know, making an impact in our niche online, how's that actually going to drive more sales and therefore help us grow our, our business? I think, Ben, what we uh, are seeing, consumers are being more empowered and people buy from people. So if they're seeing you as the trusted expert in that niche, they're going to feel more comfortable to, to buy from you. Um, but they're also going to be feel, feel more comfortable about sharing their experience with you and telling their network about what gra a great experience they had with um, dealing with you in your business. So it's obviously important within our personal branding when we're doing it for our professional benefit to link to our, our core business entities as well. So our corporate brands from our personal brands, is that right? Absolutely. So for a small business, uh, if you've got a business page on Facebook, get your employees uh, involved as well. They're the best advocates of your brand and it can just grow from there. So your employees networks will want to support them um, and then that can just go further, like a, a, a viral effect if you wish. Um, but it's important to also have clear expectations of your employees before you start doing a program such as that. Um, but yeah, having a personal brand and your employees supporting that personal brand is only going to um, benefit uh, and get you more known. Uh, the more consistent you are with using your brand and, and posting on social media, the more the top of mind you will become of potential clients, but also the clients you already have. So they can uh, think about what a great experience they had with you uh, and then talk about you on their networks. Yeah, right. So it might not just be about the owner of the business investing time into building their personal brand for business benefit, but potentially there could be one or two other key people within the business that that there's a benefit to the business to grow their personal brand as well? Absolutely, Ben. So by identifying a potential social media champion, if you will, within the organisation, so someone who enjoys using social media as a medium, who will be an advocate of your brand, you then have an opportunity to be introduced to a whole new network of people that you potentially wouldn't have had access to if you didn't use that uh, employee's network. Yeah, and allow other personalities within your organisation to come through in, in your organisation's personality. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. So it'll make um, your overall business brand a little bit more deeper when it comes to personalities um, and different people will then be attracted to those different personalities. Yeah, cool. That's fantastic. So I can, so I can really start to see the benefit to attracting new business of having that personality in a, in a brand. And is that what it's all about, kind of attracting new business? Look, it is, it, um, but it also has the added benefit of uh, repelling, if you will, <laughs> um, customers that really aren't your ideal client. Because if you can attract uh, an ideal client just through your personal brand, um, then you know a lot of the hard work is done because they already trust you. And then those people that aren't really your ideal client, they won't be attracted to your personal brand and you don't have to waste your time trying to upsell them when it's never going to happen anyway. And we've all had those clients that we don't really want in yeah. the first place. So oh, great way to kind of filter them out, I guess. If they, if they connect with your personal brand, then they're going to be the, the ideal customers for you, yeah? Exactly. Yep. Awesome. So before we finish up this series, are there any final thoughts on growing a personal brand for business? Absolutely. I think uh, any astute business owner these days or, or consumer uh, is going to research the brand 
um, as much as they can. They're going to find out as much information as they can. Um, so if you want to leave that up to chance, you can, or you can do something about it, and that's create your personal brand. Yeah, I don't think I want to leave it up to chance. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much. And that's the end of this series on personal branding for Digital Marketing Toolkit. So I want to thank you, Lisa, for coming in and spending the time with us over the last four episodes. You can find out more about Social Media Mastery where? Yep, um, socialmediamastery.com.au or we also have a socialmediabootcamp.net.au where we actually have an accredited social media management training program. Excellent. So check out those pages to find out more about Lisa and Social Media Mastery. And thanks again. Use the hashtag DM Toolkit for any questions or comments, whether you have them for Lisa or for us. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or on YouTube to catch up with the next Digital Marketing Toolkit series as we bring another round of experts to you with practical tips and tools to help you grow your business online. So until next time, I'm Ben Amos from Engage Video Marketing, and we'll see you then. This is your Digital Marketing Toolkit.